The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Miracles are now. Boy, that's, that's a tweet right there. They're not tomorrow, they're right now. I said they're right now. You remember the woman, uh, here was Jesus, he came to the wedding of Cana, and he walked in here, and then uh, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. He said, well, what is that to me? My hour is not yet come. That's John chapter two. My hour is not yet come. And, and, Jesus, and she said this, she didn't even pay any attention to it. She said, whatever he says, you just do it. <laughs> Talking to the servants now. And, and that's what they did. Notice what he said. He said, fill the water pots up with water. Now, he, they don't know what's going to happen, but he's telling them what to do. See, a lot of times you don't know what's going to happen, but you just receive by faith what to do. Come on now. And you just do what you do. See, because you don't have to wait on time. You don't even have to wait on time to think. Boy, I know I'm getting... I'm going, I'm, can I go out there? Put that scripture back up there again that you just had there. And so notice what he says here. He said, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots up with water. And they fill them up to the brim. Look at this. And he said to them, draw out now and bear to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. All right. And when he, the ruler of the feast tasted that water was made wine, he knew not which it was. But the servant the, that drew the, which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast, faith, ta, uh, feast called the bridegroom and he said to him, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, got drunk, then you pull out that stuff that's bad, praise God. Pull out that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until what? Now, next verse. In the beginning, this is the beginning of what? Miracles. Now, my point to you is, is that what do you have to do to make wine? You have to take one, you have to plant the seed. You have to plant the seed, wait on the vine to grow. You wait on the vine to grow, that's a number of years. They tell me about nine years. Then once those uh, grapes are growing on the vine, then you've got to take the grapes. Once you pull the grapes, you've got to take the grapes in and you've got to mash the grapes. Once you mash the grapes, you've got to sit the wine up and let it ferment. And sometimes the older the wine, the longer it fermented, the better the wine. Come on now, y'all used to be. Okay. And the better the wine. But my point to you is, is, look at all the steps that are in between this miracle. Say amen. amen. So notice what he did. He jumped over all those steps because you don't have to do it in time. You do it by faith. And then he said, you've served the best wine until now. Best wine, do you know to get the best wine is something like 200 years or something that that wine has been kept in those bottles and so forth? And tell me if you, if one man looked on the internet to see what the best wine would cost. A, best, a bottle of the best wine was costing about $320,000. For the best wine. And how much did they have there? They had 30 gallons in each one of the five water pots. Now that's a whole lot of best wine. So I know what they were doing. They weren't going to drink all of that. That was going to be a wedding gift for the wedding couple. Because when they drunk that little bit, he's going to take the rest, sell it, and they're going to have plenty of money to live on because at that time when you get married, no man or woman supposed to work for one year. They're supposed to get to know one another for one year. Come on now. They got plenty to live on. Come on. We got bread coming with this. I'm saying when you go get your barbecue, don't forget your bread. Supernatural is where we came from. We came from a supernatural God. The world doesn't know this because they're not born again. Yeah. They have to wait on time. Yeah. Man. We don't. Yeah. Man. We've got faith. Yes. 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 And faith is always when? Now. It's right now, folks. It's right now. Man. Isn't this good? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now let's, let's look at this because I'm still talking about um, um, Adam in the garden. So the next thing happens is that in verse 7 of chapter 2. Let's go there. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. 
And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breaths of life, and man became a living soul. Now, one translation says in the Hamash translation, they tell me, that he became a speaking spirit like God. Now, I shared with you this one other time, and man shared it with me, and I really, really believe it's so. He said, when God stood Adam up beside him, angels thought they were seeing double. That's how much man was made like God. And if you go on down here, if you look, it said, uh, let's say, uh, verse 8, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou shalt be freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge, underline knowledge, please, of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day you eat of it, thou shalt, uh, thereof thou shalt surely what? Die. Now this is where this thing really starts taking a turn of revelation. Because the first thing that happens, let's just look at this. The first thing that happens. He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Knowledge, the word knowledge, underline it. In Hebrew, the word is diath, D-A in your space, A-T-H, diath. And it means knowledge gained by senses. Knowledge gained by senses. So Adam, here's the deal. You eat of this, you're going to be disconnected from me. And all the knowledge you're going to get from then on is going to come through your senses. Now, how is that different? Because Adam was not meant to be led by his senses. He was meant to be led by the Spirit. God is not talking to your flesh. He is talking to your mind, your spirit, rather. Okay? Now, now if you look at this, this situation that Adam is in, he then goes here in verse th- in chapter 3, and they eat of it. Now, if you start reading at verse 6, he said, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it's pleasant to the eyes and a tree desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of both of them, the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Now, weren't their eyes open to see the tree? Okay, so you know something's wrong with that. So what happened? Adam died spiritually. Now he didn't die in his body for about 900 years later. So basically he was a walking dead man. Like folk today. They're walking, but they're walking dead. Now, God doesn't want to leave them like that. But the only time they got a a choice, make a choice to live again, is while they're walking. That they're going to have to make a choice now. You know what I'd do if I wasn't saved? I'd get saved. When? Now. Now. Okay, because there's some definite advantages to this. So now, this knowledge of good and evil. So now, Adam eats of it, and now he falls. And when he falls, all of his knowledge now is coming by his senses. In other words, 
he began to live a life from knowledge gained from the outside in. From his senses, his five senses, his five senses had to tell him something. You, you need your senses. You, you, if somebody asked me what color dress does she have, I say he has a red dress. Well, how can I know that? Because I can see it. But if that's shut down, I can't tell you. So right there, my knowledge becomes limited. And this idea of being able to pick up things from the senses is what the enemy wants because now he can control what you see. And when he controls what you see, you thought you were looking at this, but he did that and you saw that and interpreted that way and made a, a, a decision based on that, but it was the wrong decision because you were deceived from what you saw. Can I, can I, can I say this? So now here man is in a bad situation, so he fell. He fell from being the second now all the way down to under Satan. Now Satan became the God of this world. So what does Satan do? He affects his mind. He blinds the mind. He makes it why? Because he knows his mind and his senses are the only thing he's got to guide him. But like I said, Jesus came to restore us back to our original mode of operation. Say amen to that. So once man fell, the birth of education began. Because man didn't learn before. He discerned. Education was born. Now, let's look at it. When Jesus came, he restored some things. So let's look at this. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Let's start right there. He says this. But as it is written, this is Apostle Paul talking, the eye has not seen, that's your natural eye. Your ear has not heard, that's your natural ear. Neither has entered into the heart of man, that's a natural part of you, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his what? Spirit. He's now, we're, once you're born again, you're alive to God again, and he's talking spirit to spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man that's in him? See, that's your potential. Your potential is not in your flesh. Your potential, if your potential is in your flesh, Peter never could have walked on that water. Because the potential was in his flesh. And can't no flesh stand on top of water? But it's when your potential is in your spirit, it takes dominion over your flesh and you can walk right on that water. Glory to God. Oh, yeah, y'all messing with me now. Let, let me. <laughs> so what happened? So here he's saying that your spirit knows all about you. See, that's why when I pray at the beginning of the year, I cannot pray. I say, Lord, what do you want to do this year? I want to know what you want to do with the ministry. I want to know what you want to do with me. Well, I have to get his plan. Because if I let myself think of my plan, I just want to do something that I feel in my natural mind I can do. When I'm much bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Amen. Say amen to this. So God will tell me something and guaranteed every time he tells me, it seems like it's impossible. But it's not impossible for my spirit because once my spirit hears it, it loves the impossible. All right. Come on. My faith is energized by the impossible. All right. Are, are y'all with me now? Yeah. So I'm planning supernaturally and by faith instead of planning by time. Amen. Now, is, am I getting too deep for you? No. Okay. So your spirit knows all about you. Your mind doesn't. Your mind only knows what it's experienced. But your spirit knows all about you and God knows all about your spirit. You can't listen to your human logic because nowhere in the Bible did logic produce a miracle. You got to come out of there. Stop trying 
to adjust your life according to human reason and what you've experienced back there with mama and them. Y'all know what I mean by mama and them? Stop, stop trying to run your life based on that. Get to the book and think with the word. If this Bible says you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you, that's what it means. You look at it and you look at yourself. I mean, just, just tell yourself you're going to fast for three days. And watch. Boy, the next thought is, is uh, happy meals. Come on, the next thought. You, you do it. Because this mind here, it wants to be the boss. Your flesh wants to be the boss. You get saved, your spirit says, let's go to church. Flesh says, riverboat. I mean, it's calling. Why? Because it ain't saved. But it's not the boss. Paul says, I keep under my body. Not I put it under. You got to put it under and keep that rascal there. Now you can do much more than you think you can do. And don't go in that classroom. I can't work no math. What did you just do? You spoke words that blocked the door to your deliverance. You can't do it. Whatever you think you can, can't do, say you can. Say amen to that. Stop confessing curse on yourself. He said your angels are going to be with you and they're going to be listening to everything you say. And it's illegal for God to do one thing for you and you're confessing something else. The law of faith says that whatever God will do for you, you will have to confess it first. So I difficult it looks, say it. You find a promise in that Bible, get in that promise and meditate that thing. I'm talking about fill up your mind, fill up your heart with that word of God and then start speaking that thing. It's a law. It's got to come to pass. Are y'all with me? Remember, miracles are easier than doing things in that progression of time. Human reason became the deciding factor of whether something was possible or not because of Adam's fall. Jesus came to reverse that. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Here's what Jesus said. It's not me, it's the Father in me. He's doing the work. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Here he is speaking about supernatural disposition. All right, let's tell you what I mean by that. Once you get born again, you don't have to pray for peace. You have peace. By faith, you cause peace to come out. So, you're in a situation, and it's a situation that there's a great deal of fear and affliction and so forth in that situation. You can operate in peace. Watch this. And they can be affected by it. Oh, yeah. You're going in where giants are. Watch this. 
they'll pull out a file on you and say, now, she used to react when we shortened her check. <laughs> come on, come on now, come on now. I'm talking about a dossier on you. I'm talking about if, since you were a kid, some, somebody had been tracking you. <laughs> you know how the FBI do, they try to get over you. So what happened? I'm saying, how about self-control? So now, one demon talking to another. Now, if you push this button, she gonna cuss you. She gonna cuss. Just, just push this button right here. You gonna cuss. Now put, push it, watch, watch it, push it, push it. Put stop. Oh Lord Jesus, I thought she was saved. Okay, now now just listen to what I'm saying now. Supernatural disposition. Here's a brother. Instead of having temperance or self-control, he didn't have any. He wasn't saved. And he ended up doing 20 years. No self-control. But you're going into a land of giants. They are button pushers. Why? They know you came there to dispossess them. They know you came in there to get rich. They know you showed up to get healed. And if they can just push this button, you'll forget about the healing and cuss him out. No, 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 listen, not, 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 not you. I'm not saying that you. I'm not saying that you. I, I, you I'm, I'm using an extreme example. But I'm saying you'll lose it. See, and when you lose it, you lose faith. And faith is the thing to get you to your destiny. Yeah. Is this making sense to you now? Yeah. Now, how can you overcome that? The first step is you must be born again. If you're not born again, you can't stop it because they are much mightier than you. Put up there, Deuteronomy again. Deuteronomy chapter 7, please, and verse 1. Just put it up there. Watch this. I'm taking you into the Canaan now. Watch this. When the Lord thy God shall bring you into the land where you go into possess it and has cast out many, many nations from before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, 
This is a time we give you, the listening audience, to those that are being blessed by this broadcast, an opportunity to sow seed into this ministry. We are doing a worldwide work. Praise God. And it takes money to do it. As you sow your seed, you're making an investment, not only in this ministry and in the kingdom, but you're making an investment in people's lives. People are able to actually be a benefit off of the teachings that we're doing because we're able to go there. Praise God. Well, as I was sowing into the kingdom and learned the process of sowing and reaping, I learned that I cannot take my confession and go against what I believe is being done. In other words, if I sow a seed, I can't say, you know, I can't ever get these bills paid. Or, you know, none of this ever works for me. Or, you know, I bet you as soon as I sow this seed, I'll get laid off. <laughs> you know, you can't say things like that. You got to say, hey, I've given and now it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed out, shaken together, running over. Men are giving into my bosom. I remember the confession was really taught to me when I spoke to my bills. I took my bills and I put them on the table. You know, I taught, heard this man's teaching about how he did that. And then I remember going out one winter day when my car wouldn't start and spoke to it. And it started. And then I said, if you'll start, my car will start with words, then my bills can get paid off with words. And so I spoke to those bills. I said, bills, I'm talking to you in the name of Jesus, be paid off. Now, God then led me to sow some seed. And as I did that supernaturally within one year, every debt I had was gone. I'm telling you, folks, I was supernaturally in debt. People were calling the house and we didn't have call ID like you have today, but they were calling the house. And I'm telling you, I, uh, I got those debts paid off. That was the biggest burden off of my shoulder. And I owe no man anything even today. That's been 30 years. No house, no, no car, no nothing. Everything is paid cash. Why? Because I give and it shall be given unto me. Well, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to know that as you do sow this seed into this, this ministry, that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. As you prepare your seed, I'd like to pray over it right now. So just in mind or keep it in the envelope or hold it in your hand, whatever you do, just as a point of contact. Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the seed that are being sown into this ministry. Every person, Lord, that is sowing this seed, I pray that you measure it back to them a thousand times more. Father, or whatever need they would have, I pray that that need is met. Lord, we thank you for it. We believe it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is Bill Winston saying thank you very much. Thank you for helping us to get the gospel to the nations of the earth. We love you and keep walking by faith. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I